Apple just dropped their most affordable iPhone in years. Affordable to who? Uh, no one knows. To hit the price point of a very affordable $600 phone, they made some interesting choices. No MagSafe, no ultra wideband chip, and this, a 60 hertz display, Bruh. What exactly is the iPhone 16e? A budget phone or a Frankenstein mix of past models? Today, we're opening this guy up to see what parts Apple reused, what they removed, and since there's no MagSafe, well, we might just fix that ourselves. This just feels weird. We're back to having the notch and the one camera. I can see this being popular with corporations or just the average consumer, but for me, well, I probably would never use a phone like this. The iPhone SE was a fan favorite and actually affordable. This one, not so much. The A18 chip though will guarantee the longevity of this device and Apple also snuck in a teardown sneak peek. So it's likely this uses the same battery removal tech as the 16 and probably some other components from past generations. Let's cook the iPhone 16e. If this opens up anything like the iPhone 14, it'll open from the back, meaning we need to cook the rear end. The iPhone 16e is done cooking. This screen on the front here looks almost identical to the iPhone 14 screen and in past generations the SE has had interchangeable parts so will that be the case this time around? We're gonna test that out a little bit later. We'll take our screwdriver and the pencil bit and hit the iPhone 16e with an unscrew. So the fact that this is named 16e suggests that there might be a 17e or an 18e. Who knows? We'll slap that in our display or back glass room Mover and there we go. While applying some heat, we can just pull up on the screen. Whoa. Now we can go ahead and take a plastic prying card and pry in between the frame and the back glass. Now we'll remove the phone. It looks like we can now open it up. And that is the iPhone 16e. Right off the bat, this looks very similar to both the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 15, aside from the rear camera. It's strange to see one camera in an iPhone nowadays, but here we are. We also have a massive battery. This is so much bigger than what I'm used to. So by removing the camera, they were able to add a bigger battery. Is that a good trade-off? I'm not sure. It's really up to you. Let's go ahead and unscrew this plate here to get that back glass removed. Before we uh, disconnect the back glass, I forgot we have to disconnect the battery obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and disconnect the battery and we'll disconnect the back glass. Now we can remove it. And there it is. In all prior SE versions, back glass wasn't a thing you could remove. It was glued to the actual frame. But going forward, Apple seems to be adopting this new model where the back glass can be removed, which uh, I'm grateful for. It's good to have removable back glass because it makes the device more repairable. On the back glass, we obviously have the wireless charging coil here, which is now 7.5 watts, a bit of a downgrade. And honestly, wireless charging will be painfully slow with this device. But I still want to see if we can add the MagSafe magnet, so that's something we're gonna explore in a little bit. But for now, let's take a look at that battery. The battery life on this phone is really good, and that's partly because of the new C1 chip, but we still don't know how many milliamp hours this battery is. We're gonna basically use this tool, which runs a current through the electrically activated adhesive, and the battery should come right off just like that. That was incredibly easy, and if you want any tools that I have, including this one, they're all available on my website. I've posted the links to everything. Now, let's remove the alligator clip, and let's turn this guy around. So on the battery, it says it has a rating of 3.88 volts and 4,005 milliamp hours. Obviously, the actual rating will probably be a little bit less, but 4,005 milliamp hours is significantly larger than any other iPhone this size. We'll compare the iPhone 16e to the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 14 because so far this looks like a Frankenstein mix of this, this, and even the iPhone 16 with the battery. So right off the bat, I can see that the front cameras don't look like the iPhone 15, obviously. They look like the iPhone 14, but the earpiece speaker underneath likely the same as the iPhone 15. And the same thing with the loudspeaker down here. They're literally the same size. 
Also, the same thing with the Taptic engine. The board layout is very different, and pretty much all the changes in this phone revolve around having that bigger battery and that singular camera. We're gonna do some tests later and see what components work with the 16E, but for now, let's go a little bit deeper. We'll go ahead and unscrew the motherboard. Something a lot of people don't factor in with this device is that using older parts means cheaper repairs, and cheaper repairs means an overall more affordable device because everything breaks at one point or another. If this device uses older parts, well, you can expect to pay less for repairs, which is always a perk and makes this phone more repairable than other iPhones. Now we can go ahead and remove the motherboard. We know from our friends at Rewa that the A18 chip and the C1 chip are within the board. It's a sandwich board and within the board, there we go. That's the A18 chip and that is the C1 chip. The A18 chip is actually a six core CPU and a four core GPU. It's been binned, but it has a 16 core neural engine, so you're still gonna be able to use Apple intelligence as you usually would. We're gonna go ahead and remove all the other small components and see if any of them resemble components from prior generations. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been kind of busy. I tore down the iPhone 14, the iPhone 15, the 16, and obviously the 16E, and what I found was kind of weird. So the iPhone 16 has no compatible parts with the iPhone 16E, but the iPhone 14 and 15, well, that's where it gets weird. So the iPhone 14's front camera fits in the 16E, but doesn't work at all. The 14's taptic engine, or vibration motor, fits and works, while the 15's only seems to fit but just doesn't work. The 15 loudspeaker, on the other hand, works with the 16E, while the 14's doesn't. None of the batteries fit in the 16E, which I expected, and the SIM reader of the 14 seems to work while the 15s doesn't. Then comes the wireless charging coil. Both the 14 and the 15s wireless charging coil fit on the iPhone 16e and work, but the flash doesn't. And I know what you're thinking. Does it charge faster with one of the other coils? I'm still not 100% sure, but according to my amp meter, it doesn't. Having these installed also causes the phone to restart, but there's a way around this I might try in a short video. Now now for the screen. I went ahead and put everything back together. Now it's time to remove the display so that we can test out whether the iPhone 14 display works or not with this device. We'll go ahead and use our suction cup and we're going to use alcohol as well as some heat to get this thing off smoothly. I'm always scared to burn an OLED display because they're made of organic material and they can burn. And you can see the display's coming off pretty easily. So if the iPhone 14 screen does work, then that means screen replacement costs will be significantly cheaper and there's already parts available. Every time a new iPhone comes out, we have to wait for parts to become available. It takes a bit of time, but if this works, then we can fix these right away. Disconnect the display, there we go and we'll grab our iPhone 14 display. This is actually an aftermarket display. It's not even an original display. Uh, let's go ahead and install this. Boom, it's now clicked in. So let's see if we get a display. We'll plug in the battery. Now we'll go ahead and press and hold the power button and see if we get a display. And we have the Apple logo. So the iPhone 14 display does seem to work, but we still don't know if touch works. Let's, uh, let's see if it does. So I have gloves on. There we go. It looks like touch is working. That means you can use the iPhone 14 display to fix an iPhone 16e and most likely vice versa. This is huge for repair. Let's upgrade that wireless charger by adding the MagSafe magnets if we can. So obviously there's graphite film covering the wireless charger. We're going to have to remove that. And to do that, all we have to do is apply some heat. Now we can take some tweezers and we're going to come in at a corner here. It looks like this is copper film, not graphite paper. And it looks like I'm peeling off the freaking wireless charger with it. Interesting. Not necessarily a bad thing, just not really what I was expecting. Now we can take our MagSafe magnets, and I hope this works. We're going to place them just right over here, like that, and stick them down. It's not the cleanest fit, but there is enough space here beside the battery, so this shouldn't really push the back glass out any more than it usually is. Remove the peel and place the wireless charging coil back on. We'll go ahead and put everything back together and see if this works. If it does, it's something literally anyone can do at home. Really easy to apply these magnets. And the moment of truth, 
is there gonna be a bit of a bulge? And it seems like it's sitting flush. I don't really see anything abnormal here. We'll grab our wireless charging puck and slap that on. Boom, wireless charging at 7.5 watts. Still excruciatingly slow, but faster than without the magnets because if it's misaligned, it wouldn't charge as fast. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been the iPhone 16e teardown and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.